hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber a warm welcome back in this video i'm going to be talking about three french leather goods brands camille fournay bonastre and guibert paris i'm anesu sagonda and i produce educational luxury content for anyone after the finer things whether you're new to money and wanting to learn how to navigate the terrain or you're into luxury but you want to focus more on high quality under the radar brands or you're young and starting out in life and wanting to reap the benefits of buying better quality from the get-go then my content is geared towards you the first two brands i literally stumbled upon in my comments section i was asked what my thoughts were with regards to the two brands together with a number of other um, everyday level of luxury French brands. The third brand, Camille Fournay, I literally stumbled upon the last time I was in Paris um, last summer and I was walking towards Fort La Page. Uh, Camille Fournay is located just at the beginning of Rue Cambon and it's the same road where you have the Chanel flagship a couple of doors down on the same side, Fort La Page. And then directly opposite, you have Barry, the cashmere brand. And then you also have La Maison uh, Michel or Michael, the, the hat company. And then further down, you have Ritz Le Comtois. And it's a part of town I tend to go to every single time I'm in Paris because it's just off uh, Rue du Faubourg Saint Honoré. So you're moments away from Hermes and Joseph to close. It's a part of town I'm incredibly familiar with and we'll go and see one or two brands um, on every visit. But at that time, I was rushing to fall apart and I didn't get a chance to go into Camille Fournay. And I'm really glad I did. And what initially caught my eye was the fact that the designs were different. They're exquisite, nothing like I'd ever seen. And the vibrant choice of colors was incredibly enticing. I thought next time I'm in Paris, I have to go back. And seeing these through three brands just confirmed uh, or rather gave me a jolt that I need to focus on high quality under the radar brands across all price points. I get so many requests to give my thoughts on uh, your more everyday, your cheaper, affordable level of luxury. Think of British brands like Strathbury, Aspinall London, Osprey, recently Tusting, uh, or your French brands, Tammy et Benjamin, uh, Leo et Violetta. And these are all brands I've seen, I'm aware of. And I just thought after seeing these three, two of them are your affordable level of luxury, Bonastre and uh, Guibert Paris. Camille Fournay is more your borderline accessible core going up to premium core. The quality of all three brands is absolutely outstanding, especially for their respective levels of luxury. Bonastre and Guibert Paris are offering phenomenal quality leathers at a steal, at a fraction of the price you should actually be paying. You should be paying more for the quality of leathers and the craftsmanship that has gone into the bags. But because they're brands that are not very well known, uh, they're very much under the radar there. They are, if you know, you know. And so their prices are lower, their visibility is lower, but seeing them just made me realize I really wanna focus on contemporary independent brands like this, as opposed to venturing out to what I think are low hanging fruit with your more mass focused brands that more people know. And they're offering a fraction of the quality that Bonastre and Guibert Paris, for example, are offering. So I'm really going to start moving away from um, a lot of the cheap uh, everyday luxury brands and focus more on a level up affordable luxury. So it's bags that are priced between 300 pounds through to a thousand pounds. And then the next level up accessible core and above because that's where the magic is and as you know i always say buy better buy less you buy a bag it looks good it performs well and it lasts a long time and in this day and age modern luxury has to be environmentally and socially responsible and you get that with the three brands i'm going to be talking about in this video guiba paris is a saddlery first and foremost they produce uh, top end saddles for your dressage, your eventing, your endurance riding. And you will see some of their saddles at the upcoming Olympics later on in Paris this year. Um, some of the French riders have commissioned Guibert Paris to produce their saddles. And they've 
I used the same strong and very soft leather to produce complementing accessories. Think of, for example, belts, wallets, bags, card holders, but I'm only going to be focused on bags in this video, but you're going to get, for example, wallets and card holders um, in similar, in the same complementing colors to the bags that I'm going to be talking about. Their bags, um, in fact, their leather goods, I think are best described as honest, well-made, no frills and functional because that's literally what you're going to get. I say honest because the leather they're using um, has been sourced from some of the best tanneries, not only in France, but in the world. They work with the good and the great. Think of Haas, for example, where they source um, their smooth calfskin, what they refer to as saddle. Uh, they also work with uh, Remy Carriat, for example, where they source their, their torion, their bullskin uh, leather. What you will find price-wise is that the saddle calfskin uh, products are a little more expensive than the, uh, the torion. Uh, and that's because saddle calfskin is not as readily available. So you're going to pay a premium uh, in comparison to the torion products, but that's not going to affect the, the craftsmanship. It's exactly the same, but just two uh, different leathers. Uh, all of the leathers that they use are vegetable tanned. So all of the leather goods are going to uh, produce a stunning patina as they age with wear and tear. Um, well made, uh, all of their products are made in, in Spain using French leathers and French hardware. Uh, no frills, um, no frills in that the designs are simple. They're elegant, um, not over the top or overly elaborate, they're functional. And what you will find is that with their bags, they have a small limited selection and the styles that they have are more your high usage bags, bags you'd use possibly daily, all day, um, uh, or often think of, for example, um, the saddle bag as a shopping bag. Um, they, you have your work bag options, overnight bag options. There's uh, one style that's a handbag. You're not going to find styles that you would use for going out to your high fashion events or a wedding or a special occasion. It's very much your functional bags that are well made using the very best quality leathers um, in the industry. The day that I arrived, I called ahead just to make sure the showroom um, would be open. And I thought I would see one of the, the lovely sales assistants I spoke to on the phone. But lo and behold, I was welcomed by Pierre Guibert. He wasn't actually expecting me, but he just opened the door and he was absolutely fantastic. And one thing I really like, uh, one of the many things actually I like about contemporary independent brands is that when you visit their showrooms, it's highly likely you will meet either the owner, the creative director, or somebody who's in a key decision-making position. And so the conversations you have, the feedback you, you, you give, they'll be able to react immediately. And it's not the same case if you go to Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Prada, for example. You're not going to bump into Gucci Prada, for example, or the creative director or the, the owners of Chanel, for example. That's just something that'll never happen unless you've been invited to a, a company-specific event. And Pierre literally indulged all of my questions. I spent well over an hour. We spoke about the brand, saddles, the leathers, the industry as a whole. And I really like Guibert Paris. I like the simplicity of the brand in terms of the products they're producing. They're no fuss, they're well made using the best quality leathers. What more would you want? When I went in, I specifically had a bowling bag in mind. It's something I wanted to buy from the brand. A bowling bag as a travel bag. Um, traveling within the United Kingdom, going away for the weekend or further afield, somewhere to put my wallet, money and so forth. And so I had a bowling bag in mind. But when I arrived and saw some of the other styles in person, I also liked the saddle bag. And I'm somebody who will pop out to the supermarket two, three times a week uh, just to buy a couple of things. And I thought the saddle bag would be perfect. Um, my wallet, phone, keys and the couple of things that I'll be picking up in the supermarket. It would be perfect for that. It would be also perfect as a diaper bag, for example. Um, I also liked the Fontaise bag, either as a work bag, going to meetings, pop in books, files, laptop, tablet, for example, or as an overnight, a weekend bag um, with all of my things. It, they would fit comfortably in that bag. And then throw into the equation, I discovered that Guibert Paris have their own unique colors exclusively dyed by the tanneries that they uh, work with. I like the color orange and I typically go for burnt orange products, but I ended up seeing a more muted orange, which they refer to as Maasai. 
I also liked uh, the reds I saw, the blues. I liked the more natural calfskin color, the gold color. And so throw into the equation um, additional bags that came onto my radar, different colors. I thought next time I'm in Paris, um, I will pick up a bag. I'll have had time to think about the style or possibly styles I'd like and in which colors. And I'll keep you posted on that. What I also noticed with their bags is all of their bags, I think all of them with the exception of maybe one, um, are lined uh, using suede. They have suede on the inside and that's the natural suede that comes with the leather. And something worth noting, especially if you are shopping for uh, leather goods, for bags, uh, going to independent artisans, one of the key indicators when you have stumbled across um, really good quality leather is the suede on the, outs on the inside will be absolutely beautiful. It will be attractive and you are able to use it as the lining. When you have leather that's not so good, the lining on the inside, the suede is, is awful. So what you'll find is the cheaper brands will typically line the inside because the suede is, it doesn't look good. The quality of the leather is not the best, but it has been maybe heavily processed. So the leather is going to perform well. At the top end, um, a lot of the bigger brands, uh, they're not necessarily using the best quality leathers all the time. Uh, and that's because they need to produce thousands of um, quantities of leather to be able to produce the high volumes of bags that they're producing and so they may not necessarily use the best quality leathers and so the leather on the inside won't look so good the suede won't be as as attractive so they will cover that or maybe if they want to add structure to the bag then they may line the inside but if a brand is using exquisite quality leather they tend to show it off brands that immediately come to mind are joseph de Clos and longchamp Two brands that I really like and they use fantastic quality leathers for their respective uh, levels of luxury. But Guibert Paris is a fantastic brand. I like the simplicity of the brand across the board, the board whether it's their saddles, their leather goods, they're simple, they're well made using the very best quality leathers. Prices you're looking at prices of between 300 to about um, 700 depending on the product, the leather that's been used and the style of the bag. But it's just simple, well-made products using the very best quality leathers. So if you're, not some, if you're somebody who's not into hype and you just want something that's going to last literally a lifetime using fantastic leather that's going to tin exquisitely, then Guibert Paris, it's the best. I can't think of a better brand. I met with the founder and creative director of Bonastre, Fernando Bonastre de Thelis. And I met with him and the bulk of his team. So it was good to put faces to names in their store that's located in the third arrondissement, uh, Marais. And I spent over an hour with them and I, I was able to get a really good understanding of the brand, its values. Um, I was able to see all of their core styles. I also got a sneak peek into some of their more seasonal styles and it was a morning very well spent. I really like um, seeing brands in their home territory and getting a complete picture of the brand. And as I was leaving, I couldn't help but just feel a tinge of sadness that I had unearthed a fantastic brand and I just, I know why they aren't a lot more visible, but it was just sad to think this is a brand that is using high quality leathers and they're producing they are creating bags with a level of craft and details and a very high quality of finish you're not going to get from the hugely aspirational brands um, at all and they are charging three four five times the price uh, the prices that bonastre are charging and i guess that's just life but as i was leaving um, my parting question to him was what are you doing to differentiate yourselves from your competitors um, to stand apart because I thought is there something I can suggest I just felt so helpless and he turned around and said my competitors are not actually my peers who I assumed his competitors would be the small independent brands also jostling for space in a market that's heavily dominated by the aspirational brands that have the big budgets from their big luxury group owners but he turned around and said um, I'm competing against Louis Vuitton, Loewe, the likes of those brands, getting their customers to move away from those brands and buy from us because we're offering um, a higher quality product all around when you consider the leathers we're using and also the craft, the details, the quality of the finish and so forth. 
And I just thought, gosh, what a shame. But if I can play a small part, I definitely will. It's a brand that was started in 2011. And when they started the brand, the focus was very much on uh, creating men's bags because at that time, uh, nobody, very few brands at all, were producing bags for men. And then about six years ago, they introduced women's bags. And then a year ago, they decided to make the brand seasonless, ageless, and genderless. Their bags are all about freedom of movement, freedom of expression. You express your personality through your bag and you carry it, whichever type of bag you like, whether it's perceived male or female, however you like, um, in the attitude, with the attitude and the vibe that you would like to carry the bag with. The bags are designed in Paris and they're made in Spain, in the south of Spain, in Ubrique, in the same workshop as uh, Loewe and Louis Vuitton, where they make some of their bags. And the leathers are sourced from largely a tannery, uh, a Spanish tannery that's located in Barcelona. But they also source uh, leathers, uh, their goat skin from uh, a French tannery owned by Hermes. And they also uh, source leather from a tannery in Italy, but it's largely from Spain, uh, uh, a tannery that's near Barcelona. And their hardware is largely Spanish. They source from some of the, the big brands as well, but they work with smaller artisanal brands. When I mentioned at the beginning of this video that modern luxury needs to be environmentally and socially responsible, I, was, I had Fernando in mind because that's what he really is. He's incredibly mindful uh, of the entire chain, who he works with, who's the best fit. And so one of the distinct advantages of uh, your smaller, more artisanal brands is that they're a lot more reactive. One of his big markets is in the Far East, Japan, Taiwan. He has a huge following. And the climate, the weather is humid. And he has been able to source um, hardware that is compat compatible with the humidity in the Far East. Something you're not going to get with the big brands. They're not going to be reactive to that extent. They produce a standard product and wherever you are in the world, you buy it and whatever circumstances are unique to you, they're not going to modify the product according to your needs. So those are some of the distinct advantages as well you get with the smaller brands. As I mentioned, I spent over an hour in the store. So I, I was able to see all of their core styles, sneak peek at some of their more seasonal styles. And there were about maybe five or six styles that stood out I liked for one reason or the other. And um, I'll talk about them as a way of introducing Bonastre to you. The first style that I really liked and I will talk about um, numerous occasions during the course of this year is their tote. This is where you really get to see how they've coupled high quality leathers. They're all vegetable tanned. They only work with vegetable tanned leathers. So all of their leather goods are going to develop um, a stunning patina as they age. And what you're getting is uh, the, the, the high finish, the detail, the high quality of finish with their products. When you look at the tote, you have the hand crafting detail right at the top, uh, around the corners of the bag, uh, the details around the straps, um, the majority of their bags, with the exception of one that I will talk about in this section, um, are all suede lined. Um, this tote is offering fantastic value at this price point. It should actually cost more money when you consider the details you're getting, the craft, the quality of the leathers. But it's coming in within the affordable level of luxury. Uh, all of their bags are priced between 300 and 900 euros tops, depending of course on the style, the intricacy of the design and the size. But 900 euros is what you're going to pay a maximum of. And the totes are around three to 400 uh, euros. I don't exa I remember the exact price, but I'll include prices and exact names of products uh, alongside the visuals. And you're getting way more value for your product, uh, way more value for your money with the tote, like you are with all of their leather goods. But the tote really stood out, and I'm going to talk about it and compare it to other brands in the same level and even higher level of luxury because it very confidently holds its own. The other bag I also liked was the 24-hour bag. I like the versatility of it um, for my consumers who like totes, tote style bags, but they would like a zip. I like the details on this bag. It can be used as a work bag, uh, place a laptop, tablet, uh, files, books, for example. And it also works fantastically well as an overnight, a weekend bag, for example. I also like this particular um, uh, shoulder bag. This is the only bag that has the fabric lining because they wanted a slouchier effect to the bag. Uh, 
Um, and another bag I particularly like, liked was the dome bag. It comes in two or three different sizes. But what I liked were, of course, the details of the bag, uh, the unique design you're not going to see anywhere else. I like the two zips, the fact that you can um, open the zips and the bag totally opens out and you have the lovely suede lining on the inside. And if you're traveling, you can take the bag with you and it folds nicely with your clothes. You close the bag up and you place it in your suitcase and it's easy to transport around. I also liked uh, the Novi bag. Um, an everyday bag with a bit of attitude you can carry it over the shoulder or across your body and it just sits under the arm um, one big cavernous compartment and then the final style the bonbon and that is the first style i actually uh, stumbled upon when i was exploring the brand doing my research and the bonbon is their best selling style and when i looked at it i thought it's very similar to another style the croissant from le mer le mer is a brand that's on my radar i really like le mer Le Mer is fantastic quality. They have striking silhouettes, a fairly unique color palette. Um, and I like the utilitarian style of their clothing. And so it's a brand that, that matches, that works very well. It complements um, Bonastre. And when I was looking at the croissant, which is their it bag, it's really successful. Uh, it's been a successful uh, bag for the brand. I thought, ah, and as I was researching, I actually found out that Fernando also creates and produces Le Mer's bags. And that was such a massive endorsement um, for me. And I thought, wow, this is fantastic. He also produces bags for another brand. It's not my type of brand because it's more a young, funky, trend-led uh, brand called Marine Sir. But he produces fantastic uh, bags for the younger audience. Uh, fashion forward, colorful styles. Uh, but Le Mer is more my sort of style. And when I said to him, oh, how did you end up working with Le Mer? Because he's been working with them since 2017. He designed some of their bags. Uh, I went into the boutique as well. And some of the styles I saw, you could see similarities with Bonastre. And he was incredibly humble about uh, his work. But one of his um, team piped up and said, Fernando is incredibly humble. Let me tell you, Fernando working with Le Mer is a testament to his ability to his connections, to his uh, creativity, to the respect he commands in the industry. A brand like Le Mer doesn't produce bags, but they assign their bags to somebody who knows what they're doing when it comes to creating bags. And that to me is such a massive endorsement. And it, it just made me like Bonastre even more. Small selection of styles, but this is a superb brand. You're going to hear me talking uh, more about during the course of the year. Do subscribe if you haven't uh, already because I'm going to be creating curated selections. I'll be getting discount codes for you as well. Last but by no means least, Camille Fournay. Camille Fournay was founded in 1945 and when the brand was founded, the focus was on producing watch straps for some of the, the well-known uh, watch companies. It's something that they still do. They're incredibly well-known and highly regarded for their watch straps the world over. I remember the first time I discovered the brand. I didn't have a lot of time and I went in and realized I couldn't speak to anyone and I, I would have to come back the next time I was in Paris. And I bumped into a buyer and he is a leather goods buyer uh, for Isatan, uh, a top department store in Japan. And as I was looking at the products and he could see I wanted to ask more, but they didn't have staff. He, he engaged with me and we started talking about the products and he said, you know, I, I buy for Isatan in Japan, um, their leather goods, and this is a solid brand. When it comes to their watch straps, they produce for the good and the great. Think of Patek Philippe, Cartier, Jäger Le Coutre, for example, many other brands. And you'll also get uh, watch collectors who will come and commission straps, look for straps, look for replacements or repairs from Camille Fournay. But now they're focused on not just watch straps, but they produce a number of complementing uh, leather accessories, more your smaller goods. Think of uh, card holders, wallets, um, gloves. They also produce uh, bags, handbags and totes, for example. And what I like about the style of their products is they're genderless. The styles can be carried by a man or a woman. Um, they don't strike me as uh, for a specific um, sex. It's very much about your own attitude and vibe and how you carry their bags. 
and their bags really stand out there's absolutely nothing in the market similar to bonastre um, that's similar they're bringing in a unique and very much welcome offering into this space um, their use of color, a lot of color. It's a colorful brand. You're not going to see uh, your blacks or your dark colors. It's a lot of color popping colors. And the focus is on contrasting lining with all of their products. So you get a pop of color on the outside and then contrasting lining on the inside. You can customize their products, but they won't customize uh, the design. They will customize the color for you, add initials, or the stitching, for example, and that's typically a two month turnaround period. Um, but it's all about the color. And then also the styles. Uh, they have Le Plissé, a collection called Le Plissé, which is pleated calfskin. Calfskin is what they uh, typically work with. They also work with alligator, which they source from Mississippi in the United States. The calfskin comes from a number of tanneries, either in France or in Italy. And the bags are all made in the north of France in a place called Picardie, where they have their workshops and they produce all of their products there. Coming back to Le Plissé, Plissé really stands out. It's pleat, it's the soft calfskin, it's lightweight. All their bags are light in weight and it's pleated calfskin and they have numerous designs. I really stand out their talking points. If you carry their bags, uh, the plissé, the pleated looks, the totes, the bags. People will notice your bag. People will comment. It'll stand out for all the right reasons. I also like the mobility collection, the attitude of the bags. Uh, and in particular, this crossbody bag. I don't know the name of it, but I will find out the name and include it. It's different, but very well thought out, well executed bag. It's comfortable and it just has its own attitude and vibe to it. And it's all about how you carry it. Um, and uh, what you wear. As I said, uh, their bags are genderless. Uh, they're urban chic, they're for the discerning consumer, someone who's fashion forward, someone who has a certain level of confidence. The styles are different. And for you to carry them off confidently and show them off and do justice to them, I think you need a certain level of confidence and attitude to you. But even if you don't, I think they bring that attitude to you. They will be a bag, uh, a style that will be noticed. The mobility collection, as I mentioned, you have uh, the, the crossover bag, you have a number of other styles that they've recently introduced. And then you have, of course, the Le Plissé, as I've mentioned, um, with the pleated and you have a number of styles. I also like the fact that they have card holders with the calf skin as well as the alligator. Um, they look absolutely beautiful. They're stunning, they're resting. I remember when I first saw them, I thought, oh wow, this is different. I really like this, this is stylish. Um, I haven't seen it anywhere else and it's been very well executed. But Camille Fournay is an absolute uh, treasure trove. Um, you will go in there looking for something else and you'll end up seeing other amazing things in there. Very well thought out, well put together, well executed collection of bags that I will uh, revisit next time I'm in Paris and um, include in uh, my essentials, uh, different bags for you to have depending on your lifestyle. Um, and their bags will fit in a number of the options, a number of the style variations I have in mind. So that's Camille Fournay Bonastre and Guibert Paris. Three French brands I particularly like across the board, different levels of luxury, bringing in fantastic quality products. Any thoughts, any questions, let me know as always in the comments down below. But to all my wonderful viewers, thank you for watching. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon.